Hello. So we just completed an example where giving a set of filter coefficients, in this case, an FIR filter, we wanted to analytically find the frequency response. What type of filter is this? And um, so the, we, we went over the fact that the frequency response, or use the fact, is the Fourier transform of the impulse response. Since this is a discrete time system, we use the discrete time Fourier transform. Since it is finite, it's easy to calculate. So we put the first coefficient, e to the j omega hat times zero, the second coefficient, the third coefficient, and then we did some mathematical manipulation to be better understand it, and we saw that this was a low pass rate. Now, once you have the frequency response, what you have is a function that tells you how the system is going to behave for all possible sinusoids. Sinusoids of all different frequencies. How the system is going to affect the magnitude and the phase. And even more importantly, because most signals of interest are going to be able to be decomposed into some of sinusoids, you can see how the system acts for any other signal. So we're going to see that frequency response is also a complete characterization of the system, like, the, for instance, the input response. So in this example, let's use the frequency response that we just saw in the previous example to find the output for a particular input. Now, in general, the output of an LTI, of a discrete time LTI system is going to be given by the difference equation or by convolution. So in this case, my output, right, will be BK coefficients, X of M minus K, from K equals in general will be from zero to M for an FIR filter. This notice, is convolution. This sometimes is represented as BK convolved with X of N, or we can do X of N convolved with X of N, right? In MATLAB, you can use the function convolution or the function filter to find the output. For any input, it doesn't matter what shape, it does not have to be sinusoidal, right? So this is the time domain characterization of the system with the difference equation, right? With the difference equation, you can find, you have a relationship of the output for any other input. In this case, the difference equation, as we saw, was one X of N, plus 2x of m minus 2, plus 1x, sorry, minus 1, times x of m minus 2. So this is the time domain definition of the system, right? So this is one way that you can define the system. <clears throat> the other way is with the impulse response, which in this case, and equal just the filter coefficients. This is what happens when you put an, a delta at the input, or if you put it in vector forms, this will be one, two, three. The third way will be with the block diagram, right? You can see that multiplying this times one, Have a delay. The second one times two. Another delay. This times one. Then either you put adds all together or you do something like this. All these are, in a way, time domain representations. Another way to characterize the system is in the frequency domain. Right, we found that e to the k omega hat was equal to, we could calculate that this was 1 e to the 
actually let's just quickly do this in general we are doing the discrete time Fourier transform from minus infinity to infinity but this and this is where we start this will be e to the k omega hat times zero plus two e to the minus j omega hat times one plus one e to the minus j omega hat times two this is the frequency domain representation analytically we could <coughs> make this um, easier to understand by doing some math as we did in the previous video right but for the purposes of thinking about there are some time domain ways of characterizing the system there's some frequency domain ways of characterizing the system this is enough now let's back up so we can calculate the output for any any input using this expression right here using convolution but now that we also have a frequency response representation that tells us how the system does for all frequencies, we could also say, well, where is the sinusoid? What is the sinusoid? Is it here? Is it here? And we know what will happen to the amplitude, right? And so in the case that the input is a sinusoid, a sinusoidal signal, we don't need to do convolution. Okay? We can just use the frequency response to find the output, meaning we know, let me, actually use here some space we know if the system is LTI we're going to do it for continuous and for discrete if we have a cosine of omega i t my output is going to be the frequency response evaluated at that point times cosine of omega i t meaning I go, if I have a cosine at the input, I'm going to have a cosine at the output. If I have an omega, a particular omega at the input, I'm going to have that particular one at the output. But the amplitude and the phase is going to be changed by the frequency response, right? Or in discrete time, omega i n, same thing. So in this case, we can just evaluate this signal at the particular frequencies right here by plugging it into this equation, right? Or plugging it into the equation that we already had. But in the calculator, it's very easy to say, in this case, what are the frequencies? We have a 4 is at omega e hat equals 0. Then we have an omega hat. So that's the first frequency, 0. Frequency 1 is at omega hat pi over 3. Frequency 2 is at omega at 7 pi over 8. Now, if we plug this into this equation that we have here, our e to the j omega, in this case the hat, is 0. It's equivalent to what we have here, right? If this is 0, this becomes the cosine of zero is one, one times two is two, plus two, four. So this is equal to four. Or you could just enter it into this equation in your calculator, and you will see that you get four. e to the j omega, second component is pi over three. Notice that this is, that's the first component that we did, which a frequency is like four times cosine of, with omega zero in this case, pi over 3 and then 7 pi over 8 and this is equal to a 3 so that's the magnitude e to the j a minus j pi over 3 
that's the, the, the phase that you're going to have, to the j omega 7 pi over 8, 0 0.1, so this is a highly attenuated, 5, 2, e to the minus j pi, uh, sorry, uh, 7 pi over 8. And so, what we have here is that my output will be this, right? It will be 4 times this, 4, plus my cosine that we had was multiplied times the 3 with the phase, so 3 plus 3 cosine of pi over 3 and minus pi over 2 minus <coughs> pi over 3 plus 3 times 0 0.52 cosine of 7 pi over 8 and minus pi a 7 pi over 8. So let's go ahead. This was the amplitude, gets multiplied here. Amplitude gets multiplied here of the magnitude. Amplitude gets multiplied here. Times the original ones that we had, which were 3, 4, 3, and 3. This is the original 4, 3, and 3. Notice the output is going to have the same frequencies that we have. It's going to have the same form, cosine and cosine. What changes is going to be the amplitude and the phase. So the original phase that you had gets shifted by whatever this was shifted, like in this case. The fundamental idea in this example is that once you know the frequency response, You can calculate outputs for sinusoidal inputs without having to do convolution. I mean, just with the thinking in the frequency domain. Okay? And, and you say, well, that only works for sinusoidal signals. That's right. But for any signal, since you can decompose them into some of sinusoids, you can do the same thinking. And that's why when we look at the frequency response of a system, what we are saying is, what is the system going to do to signals of different frequencies? In this case, we see that this is a low pass filter. Okay. So if you have a signal that is, for instance, an impulse at the input that has all frequencies, we will say, well, it's going to, this is exactly the ones that are going to, to cut. Thank you.